Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce today's uh, host, Laura Nanny, a local performance artist who performed in the, she was reminding me, 2004 7A 11D International Festival of Performance Arts, so it's been a while. Uh, thank you, Laura, for uh, agreeing to do this and uh, for agreeing to take on such a challenging day when we have so much interpretation <laughs> going on. <laughs> so, welcome. Thank you, Paul. And thank you to uh, the 7A 11D Collective for organizing an event like this because it's such a privilege to be able to talk to uh, so many interesting artists about their work. And I've, I just want to say that I'd, I'd like us to be able to have a conversation as much as possible. So I encourage uh, people as we're talking along to ask questions, um, and that goes for the artists as well. Ask, you know, feel free to ask questions of each other. Um, so I, who I have with me, uh, you may have seen Jürgen Fritz perform last evening, and uh, Kiori Haba, and sorry, from Germany. <laughs> Visions from Germany. Kiori Haba from Japan, and uh, visiting us from Edmonton, Alberta. Yolanta Lapiak. Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, I'm just going to ask you to start by briefly introducing yourself and your practice. Um, Yolanta? Me uh, first? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right then, I am Yolanta Lapiak. And um, in, uh, I have a sign uh, language name which is translated as Red Cheek. Um, I moved to Canada in, um, when I was nine years old from Europe. I moved when I was uh, nine years old, and um, I've been here ever since. Of course, the uh, sign language system has a way of uh, developing names that are similar to the way uh, Native Americans or Native Canadians uh, develop their names um, by characteristic. And so having red cheek, uh, that's my sign name. Um, I do vi uh, visual art, media, uh, and uh, always include uh, language issues in my art. Great. Kiori? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, I'm not good at uh, English, so the, I uh, ordered, uh, asked the organizer to uh, <laughs> interpret. And uh, hello, Kaori Haba from Japan. I live in Nagano Prefecture, Matsumoto City. And uh, I moved to Matsumoto City three years ago, uh, no, four years ago. And uh, I stayed in Nagano Prefecture, Nagano City. Nagano City, Nagano, we use uh, two names, capital city name and prefecture name. And uh, Nagano City, I lived in more than 20 years ago. Uh, no, 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 20 years. And uh, before that, I born in the Hokkaido Island, the North Island in the Japan Islands, in the, uh, 35 years there. And, uh, so the, I think uh, the, my background is uh, uh, my yeah, too long. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> she said I just give up. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm Jürgen Fritz. Um, I started, uh, I'm coming from Germany, and I make a long tour. I started with uh, music, it was in the 80s, doing very normal jazz music, music on the saxophone. I was young, good looking. <laughs> so, uh, for me, it's interesting that I started with saxophone uh, because. Uh, I just make a curve, I just then, after practice of long, long years, I tried the first time to bring saxophone to performance art. And it was one of my most terrible performances I did ever. Still, I try to do it, you know, but I think it gives an impression for me uh, that an image can be so strong that means the man playing saxophone that you can't transfer it to performance. I couldn't, not at all, you know? So, even this is my longest practice, I couldn't make performance out of it. Okay, so it was, it was music coming to theater, 
I, uh, I was uh, playing as an actor and then going to performance art, uh, starting actually really with a group performance, black market, this all stuff, in the, it was in the 85 and now, since now, so going on with that. Also, sometimes directing theater, but not so much. In, you just mentioned a lot of things yeah. that I'd like yeah. to ask about. Um, one of them is the process of building the image, because in yeah. seeing your performance uh, last night, which was very musical, yeah. um, I, I'm wondering if you could you could speak to that, like the the pro the process of um, creating an image over time in a performance. Is that something? Is that something that um, like do you, do you begin with a with a simple image, or are you working towards the end of a like? Do, do you see it as a composition of a creation no, of an image? No, no. Uh, I think um, uh, I st uh, I started to be interested in the last years in the pure physical aspect of performance art. So I am don't tell any stories and uh, I strongly uh, uh, go from uh, uh, to look at performance art as a form of fine art. This is more, very uh, important for me. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, because it have a big eff uh, effect on, uh, how, on how you look at yourself as an artist and how you uh, uh, expect the audience to look at you. It's a, a different, so it's not narrative. Um, uh, and what I, I try to find uh, uh, the performative image when you like to, during the performance. So it's pure mm -hmm. physical, mm -hmm. very simple. So I, I try to start with simple uh, setting mm -hmm. and go into the action. And during this action, I try to touch, <coughs> attach something. And so it was a, a very, I was very happy to cooperate with Gabe because he's a fantastic musician. Yeah. And uh, also very strict, you know, <coughs> very strict. He's, he's doing his job, I doing mine. It's as simple as that. And then we are looking, okay, how can we come together? Mm -hmm. And so <coughs> this, situation must develop during performance. Because like I, in the moment. In the moment. I just, yeah. I, uh, uh, the first time I saw him was yesterday at 2 o'clock, so I, we didn't know what, 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 will, what, will, be, what will happen. Mm -hmm. what, were, what were the parameters you were starting with? Uh, very <coughs> very simple. The He's sitting there, I'm standing here. Mm -hmm. I <coughs> proposed him that we start from silence. Mm -hmm. And we end in silence. That's it. Okay. And I told him it's about 25 to 40 minutes because I think that was a more or less uh, a given time of the situation. Yeah. The, and you, <coughs> you mentioned beginning with simple actions and um, and also simple objects. Like you, you yeah. work with very simple <coughs> objects. I'm, I'm wondering if if. Um, Kiara, you can speak to that because your piece also used, uh, the piece that you did last night, used very simple objects, um, everyday objects. If you can speak to the, the choice of, of, of some of the objects and materials you were working with. <laughs> Even in Japanese, I, I should do use you can, microphone. You can speak in it, whatever you're comfortable with, and then and then okay. Daiso will uh, interpret. <laughs> okay. And it's more. I think 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 it's more. I あ、
アクションの中でどうやってこう一つの作品にするかっていうのを最後の最後の瞬間まで考えてます。Well,、uh, the way I approach my performance、uh, is not always the same. I found one, two, three, four things、uh, for my performance yesterday, but then it did develop uh, as uh, it went by. <laughs> And I found some of them here in、uh, Toronto. <laughs> and I did research and found something to show、uh, in Japan as well. I live in Matsumoto city in Japan and I always think about my performance and I'm linking them to my performance. And that became my,、uh, one of the elements for my performance as well. Until the starting time of my performance, everything I saw became a part of my performance. So occasionally I don't decide what to include in my performance until the very, very beginning time of my performance. So, The hardest thing,、uh, challenge、uh, for me is that the organizers of performance festivals ask me two months prior to my performance <laughs> what you're going to show. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting to me is、um, how, having seen your work, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing your work, Yolanta, but the,、um, uh, the importance you place on being in the moment and the authenticity of. Um, and, and also leaving room open for,、uh, for an action develop, to develop and an image to develop. <laughs> Which I think you, know, you, were, you were speaking to the、um, what is real and presence.、Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I,、um, I like to th think about tools in、yes. performance art、uh, because it comes more from my teaching practice. Because I, myself, I had very bad teacher, very bright, <laughs> but they couldn't transform what they,、uh, their ideas to the practice. So、uh, I was working, for example, on the idea of what is a presence, what is awareness, how, and they told to me. During, okay, or not only to me, to all, it was a group, just be like the gods. <laughs> <laughs> or, or just be yourself. You know, it's impossible to be yourself, you know? Like the,、uh, or、uh, one I remember very well, it was in Poland, you know, and this time I was. And then one of the men said, Tell me how I can be present. And then the teachers. And he was a good man, really intelligent, but bad teacher. You know, he told me, ah, you have to be like the tiger in the jungle. <laughs> and then well,、uh, the man g o and afterwards, <laughs> you know. So,、uh, in this moment, I started to think okay, what can be tools、yes. for a performance artist that he can enter the stage? And work on these tools to get into the situation.、Mm -hmm. So, it's, for example, what I did yesterday, for me, very one tool is just to listen. Because I strongly believe that to listen to the sound i n s t a l l you very effectively in the situation.、Mm -hmm. Because it connects you. I did, I,、uh, so uh, this is the. Think of real, what's、yeah. real, because the sound is real. So I like, for example, having these <coughs> or children crying. So when I start with the bell, everything becomes music, you know?、Mm. And it's here. I don't have to、uh, push the world outside. It's part 
everything becomes part of the situation. And I think this is one tool, for example, to install yourself to the given situation. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what, uh, yeah, one, one approach, approach of the idea of real or presence or whatever. Yolanta, for, for yourself, how do, you, um, how do you work towards authenticity and, re and realness? This is something that we touched upon yesterday when we were briefly talking. Uh, authenticity, yes. Um, live performance, obviously, um, language. Uh, you know, in lot being live, it's the parallel with the performance, um, live conversations, interactions, and then um, putting looking at print, mm -hmm. um, the experience, the auth authenticity of uh, that live performance, and then having it videotaped. Uh, do you lose the authenticity? You know, how does space and time impact the authenticity of a piece? That's some of what I look at. I think it depends on the audience reaction as well, uh, what the authenticity level sometimes might be. If I think about key points as I'm imagining a piece, I have a, maybe an objective or I have a, an anticipated result and I might take a certain route um, to get there. But again, depending on the reaction and um, how I'm feeling the responses, I might find that I take a different route than I might have anticipated based on uh, sticking to my plan might not be as on, uh, authentic. Uh, so it's a, you still arrive at the point ultimately, but the root is very much inspired by the environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ori, do you, do you want to speak to that as well? <laughs> it's a tough question. Uh, can, uh, can you repeat the question again? Yeah, just the um, the aspect of wor working towards an a an aspect of realness or authenticity in performance, and is that something that she thinks about? And and if so, um, borrowing from Jorgen, the um, what are some of the tools that she uses? So I, I'm not too sure if I'm following uh, the conversation, mm. but uh, uh, the, whatever I have in my performance piece, uh, how does it uh, communicate through my performance? Is that a question? Or um, I guess, sorry, the, um, you know, it, this comes from the question of, of what is, what is real, what is performed, like how, um, and, and being in a moment, like an authentic, also relationship with an audience, um, not necessarily forcing a particular, I think this, the, where where I see it potentially um, ha having seen your performance is that y you're responding to what what is happening in the mo the moment, whether it be with the material or w the reaction that an audience is giving you, rather than working towards a predetermined. Um, uh, okay. Does the audience understand what I'm asking? I just want to make, I want, I want to make sure that I'm not <laughs> completely obtuse. Okay. Yeah. The performance is not a, a superficial thing for me. Maybe a metaphor of my act. The materials, uh, the objects I use in my performance could be a metaphor of something that I would like to communicate. However, 
メタファーじゃなくて本当の現実的に自分のそのなんていうかなすごくファミリアですごくあの今朝食べたリンゴだとかっていうことであればそれはそれで OK なんです。For the audience, if the apple、uh, they just ate in the morning is real to them, that's fine with me too. <笑>私はだから全然そのわからないものはあんまり使わない。で、うん、そのだからリアルがその世界あの今のところとそれからちょっと私が考えてるそのまあ何て言うかなあの現実の世界とちょっと今あるところとちょっと離れたものをこう。I try to connect the present moment at the performance or、uh, where she is right now.、Uh, I would like to connect something in the past or other time、mm-hmm. and、uh, connect them and、uh, mix them. It's because. When I'm an audience, uh, when I'm an audience at the performance art, uh, uh, I find it quite interested when the performer and audience get connected in one instance. At that moment, that instant, I, I find it quite interesting. So, when I uh, uh, create a performance art piece, I would like to create that moment with the audience.、Mm-hmm. And c- an experience with them. That's true. Yeah, so they will all get me to see. <laughs> so,、uh, as an audience, I like performance art because there's a moment that、uh, audience and performer can get connected and things become real. I'd like to I'd like to add the, if, the man is a beautiful can, can I can I add、shirt. as well?、Um, I just I just want to also add that it's not also the audience only. Sometimes、um, the、um, audience all become performers, you know, the in the in the authentic moment that we are Uh, performing together. It is an authentic interactive act. you know, So it's not me performing to them, but it is us in an exchange of ideas. Okay, so、uh, for me, I think of doing a performance as a kind of research. Yeah. But she already said, it, talked earlier about the, the research she does before the performance. So, I'm very curious from all of the artists actually to find out what constitutes research toward making a performance. <laughs> what do you think of as the research that you're doing to make a piece?、Uh, well, versus、uh, the piece, it, the, well, just, just, just not a versus, but yes, what's the research? How do you research a performance you're going to do? Maybe.、Um, Yolanta?、Yes. What, what, what constitutes it? What is your research?、Um, <laughs> for example? For example? Sure. Okay, give an example. For example? I don't want to have any unneeded、uh, misunderstandings. ね、so, 
I don't want to uh, express my misunderstanding in my performance. So, I was talking about the people who are in the present uh, uh, social and political uh, situations uh, in present time. Uh, my interpretation could be uh, misinterpreted. For example, I don't want to talk about politics right now, but if Canada participated in the uh, Iraqi war or not. So it was a really uh, big point. It's a big issue. So at the time I knew what was going on, but right now I might have forgotten. So when I deal with a war in my performance in Canada, if I use the Iraqi war uh, with uh, unclear memories, then the message I'm going to express can be wrong. Then I will need to research. Then when I don't have enough resources, I don't do that kind of performance. Um, I, I think as far as research, I think it takes a lot of different forms. Um, one, as was recently mentioned, looking at you know the issue of war, but I think it's also, you know, it's thoughtful, right? It's, it's cognitive. And I think about, you know, several years ago in Thailand, I was invited to do a, an international uh, piece there. And so I spent a lot of time thinking. It was more a thinking process for me. Um, I lived in Japan uh, for a brief uh, time. And I uh, had to, um, there was a, an, there was another girl um, who had very long hair and uh, braids. Um, for many years, she had been growing her hair uh, for uh, Locks of Love at that time, at that organization. And, um, you know, she was going to cut her hair, and instead of asking for her, instead of her doing that at her home, I asked her if she would participate in my piece because I thought that it would be very sort of relevant in the thinking I had done around preparing for this. Uh, work and then a situation kind of presented itself which could transform or um, you know be something that visually would be very striking and so then her hair being cut during the actual live moment of again that, that authentic moment but I think that um, that the research takes a lot of different forms and sometimes it's uh, just waiting for a moment and sometimes it's just very about the thinking process. Yeah. I'm afraid I don't make any research. <laughs> I don't, what I'm doing, uh, I, I, I feel that uh, I'm researching when I'm looking for performances. Be because for me, when I'm looking to other performances, I think this is the most research I do. Because for me, for example, it's the same, looking and doing. And I look, I can, I can follow the person. Because for me, a performance art is uh, to show the person, you know? And the person is in the center of the performance art, and all materials serve to show the person. When you say the person, do you mean yourself? The, the, perform the artist. The artist is the center of performance art, and he must be enough, in my approach, it's not the only one, but in this. But when I look at performance, it's my research, where she or he is going to, how she or do is making, what is successful, what is not successful, for me it's the same, successful, not successful, for me it's interesting how, how it serves to inspire the person, <coughs> this, is my, this is my research, you know, and uh, for example, the, the, uh, a very interesting discussion yes, yesterday after the performance, because one a woman 
uh, saw that is uh, our performance with Gabe uh, was something have to do a lot of co uh, with this colonialization of uh, uh, with First Nation and white uh, Canadians. Of course, I was aware of that that this could be, you know. But I couldn't find this during the performance with Gabe, you know, because it could have been. <coughs> I was I was open that this could happen as a as a possibility, but for me it doesn't. It was just it was this musical. Uh, uh, physical uh, uh, image, whatever, but not this theme of colonization. He didn't, he was not interested in that I f when, when we had this point, you know. So I didn't try to express, or I, even I never tried to express. If there is something uh, like this, I will, I will look during performance, does it happen? Does it in install this scene during, you know? Can I find it? W will it appear, yes or no? I will never go and try to express like, like yesterday, I do a performance about colonialization uh, with white American and native Indian, you know? It could have happened. So I would have glad to solve and find an image for that. Of course, but I'm aware is the possibility to read uh, this uh, performance. Maybe not answer your question. Uh, no, but not answering it is also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to connect with what you said before that you are going to this moment to connect with the audience. Maybe you can remember the first time what performance brought you into performance. It's always interesting to hear what. Do you still remember what performance you saw that said, oh shit, what is this? Uh, I'm interested. You, can you, can you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know uh, very well, you know, uh, because I really loved to this idea to uh, just work to connect with the situation. So because before in theater, I, I have to play roles. And I love it, you know, to be the, the dying father. I was a very good dying father going, going to the light, you know. So I know uh, how this is a light and it was a very good piece and I have to... And I was make this, uh, I was thinking of my father who had died some years ago, you know. And to this Strasbourg uh, uh, um, uh, method, you know, that you can bring up the feelings through connecting with your own past, you know? And I liked it very much, you know? But then, then we changed, uh, coming to this more experimental thing. I never, oh yes. There are, what, how I can come, and I have the most intimate uh, uh, situation with other persons, not touching. Just being there, I'm working, for example, on body impression. This is what I said is the ear. And it's the idea of how do a situation impress on my body physically? Mm. Mm -hmm. Do she have an impression of me? Yes or no? This is my, so this helps me so strongly to connect to, to another person. Where? And this <coughs> makes me happy, you know? This makes me going on and uh, uh, much, uh, much more stronger than to play the dying father, you know? It's more immediate. Yes, it was, a, it, was, it was this work on this, uh, on this idea of awareness, you know, coming from this Japanese, in this time very f uh, f uh, famous was a Bhutto dance, you know? And of course, uh, we were working on this same philosophy of approach uh, or, or to, uh, no, I never did like, you know, but it's another, it's a question of awareness. This is, a, this is the basic question, to be aware, what does it mean, you know? And we were working a lot on that, and this <coughs> really gave me such a new quality than I had before. Uh, can I ask, um, what, what do you actually mean by awareness? Because 
I'm just finding sort of a slight contradiction in what you were saying yeah. previously. I mean, you're talking about the performance, performance and the toolkit of the performer yeah. and the body as a tool to communicate or to express or to raise a level of awareness and then also that level of connection as well. And then you make the example from last night that you had a conversation afterwards where somebody was speaking to you about yeah. the uh, yeah. concept of colonization, which yeah. wasn't your starting point yeah. within your performance. Yeah. But a reading of your performance that probably would be very, very difficult to ignore or deny is that question around some sort of colonization or dominance of voice or dominance of sound. But where for you then does that level of awareness within the moment of the performance start to happen? Where in the act of the repeating your action again and again and again and again and that sound, that you are actually creating a certain level of awareness or consciousness that is being communicated on that level? Or do you deny that? No, 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 you know, but it's not my approach to express anything, you know. I don't express. I don't. Uh, for me, uh, performance is a process of finding. So it's a very simple setting. Uh, like I no, start, I, okay, I, so, I, I, and I, then I start with the physics, and with the what I with the setting. You know, I know I have to do this. I love starting with hearing. It's pure physical. So what did you find the last night? Then what was the uh, I, I, it's in, uh, it's uh, what to find. I have to try to touch. You know, can I touch something? Can I? Uh, 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 um, com uh, coming to this high physical whatever, then I, I think there is some kind of, of uh, communication between uh, with the situation, what part is gay, the audience, the what and what ca what I found. I don't know what I found. I tried to, you know. The performance is to try to try to touch. To come to a point, not to express. No. But that's what that sense of touch then is, is a purely individualistic, rooted so much in your consciousness then. It doesn't matter yes. if you're going to be touching yes, others. Yes, yes. No, I'm not interested to touch others. I'm not interested to tell anything. Uh, because I, to, I, I, I told you, I told in, in my approach to performance art, performance serves to show the person. The, the person of the artist is the center of the, of the performance. How, and, and I'm as an audience, for me it's the same. I can see, I can see uh, how the person will uh, assign. We have this um, ph philosophy of assignment. Um, <laughs> uh, appear. We have a full, like a a full philosophy of, about yeah, yeah. appearance. You know, a, how how a person or situation appears, and, and it's also a question of art appearance. And this, in fact, I'm interested in. I I wonder if uh, you know the 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 experience for us on the outside was uh, very much like a. It, it was about the sound, it was about the, the juxtaposition of the two performers as well as, you know, and the visual image that, that was being created. And you, you had your eyes closed for, I mean, I, I think all the way through. I mean, there no, were, no, no? But, but I wondered if, if that, if that was conscious to keep yourself separate from, from whatever else was, uh, was visually happening to, or are you, do, do you know what I mean? Because, because um, you said something really provocative um, when we were speaking earlier about not, be that there is no collaboration, you know, yeah. that they're separate. Yeah. yeah. Um, I strongly that don't believe in, uh, in collaborative work. Uh, even you may mm -hmm. say be uh, strange because I'm working with uh, such a lot of people mm -hmm. since 20 years. I'm married with them, you know, with black market people. But for me, it's all the time only existing solo work. I don't start to collaborate with anybody. But 
You know, it's only my approach. Mm -hmm. when, when I will work with Paul, I will do my stuff, he will do his shit. In the same situation. Yeah. And we will meet, you know? <laughs> we will meet. I will be aware of how, what he's doing, how it will change the situation. How, but also the same thing with the audience. The audience is there, we have an influence, strong influence on the, on the, on the situation. So, this is because I don't know what we can do together how the images and his personality and mine will meet, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I can find it through the action. You know, this is what I'm interested in. So I can't go to him and tell, okay, it's all collaborator. Yeah. No, it's, not, it's not interesting me. But I would be interested to share the space. He's starting there, I'm starting here. He can do his, I do mine. To, uh, I want, uh, uh, what I say to Gabe, do your job, I do mine, and then we will see what will happen, that's all. And that discovery yeah. happens in front of the audience. Yeah, the yeah. audience is the same part of the situation yeah. as, as, uh, as Gabe, you know, because whatever <laughs> the part of attention, of the presence of the audience, it's, I take it, and then when I close the eyes, because for me, sometimes, Hearing is much more intimate than looking. You know, I can much more come to the situation with uh, hearing mm -hmm. or working on this body impression than to, to fix on the eyes. For me, it's too much uh, uh, rational, uh, connected with the eyes, it's too much uh, rational um, distribution, but that's, uh, sorry, rational. So I'm much more interested in the ir irrational than, you know. So not in the meaning, what does it mean? I'm not interested, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. what, what is the potential? I'm much more interested in potential, mm -hmm. you know? Sorry. No, no, don't apologize. I, I, want, I want to allow um, the others to, to respond to the, uh, the question about the first performance that, that led you into performance art, and also if you, if you want to comment on any of the um, I, I'm curious about, about your approach to collaboration and consideration of that as well, because that, that for me was a, was a, is a really strong statement and I think particular to your approach, so. Yolanta? Um, well, collaboration, I would speak to, um, I would say, I don't think about um, collaboration as being uh, making a plan, putting something together, um, really being in, in an organized sense. I think it is uh, just, again, sharing a space is collaborative, um, coming to some general concepts about how we're going to approach something, um, you know, uh, even uh, expecting the audience to be collaborative in that they have also shown up and they're there to participate in, in, to an extent within that piece. So again, I would say I would speak to collaboration as being on a variety of levels even though none of them are sort of that conscious okay let's get together have a meeting let's sit down and decide we're going to do a b and c not not that type of collaboration but imagining that the collaboration exists in that we are all present and in a in that shared experience you know i'm sure the dictionary says something about uh, working together uh, to a common goal or something like that i would disagree with that sort of as a definition um, I think there's, you know, again, the, the collaborative is a range um, uh, and um, that it's not so much the traditional interpretation of it. And in terms of first performance, the seminal performance that you, that you witnessed that, um, that led you to performance art or change um, your point of view? I would then? say not so much one specific. There was one that uh, did um, hit me. Um, uh, there was a, uh, what's the, the name of an old, it's the a Polish, uh, there was an old in the 80s, there was a, a famous Polish, um, is it a P, it started the last name, sort of the P, a performing artist? It started with the P, no? Anyway, uh, there was a, a Polish artist um, at an international um, uh, theater a piece I went to for, it was um, older artists um, and uh, they were very active and I uh, 
so there was a lot of busyness at the show, and uh, there was this one performer who came up and did these very simple moves, very smooth, very fluid, very simple, no language, some visuals um, that were put up um, behind, and it was just so simple that it struck me as a... I, I felt very connected to it in the moment that something important was happening, and I couldn't I couldn't say more about it at the you know. But when I'm asked now to press, I think that that one experience that comes to mind it was just had a very a real sweetness to it that struck me, um, and and sort of moved me forward. And Kaori, the collaboration uh, about collaboration, uh, because Eugen is a teacher, uh, he's good at defining uh, words, uh, collaboration. But uh, me, so I'm not uh, formally trained as an artist. So when I think about collaboration, uh, like she said, uh, I uh, uh, see the uh, terminology from the dictionary. For me, uh, dealing with the audience is a collaboration, and uh, doing something with other artists is collaboration as well. So whenever I share the time and space, uh, either with the audience or uh, other artists, uh, that's collaboration to me. Uh, within the big uh, picture, uh, Paul invited me over to this festival, and we are trying to build this festival together. That's a collaboration to me as well. Uh, I, I, maybe I'm uh, one element of this 7 and 11 d maybe. Uh, it's also collaboration for me. The, ma, so you got Yeah, that's what I think. We, you can come back to it if you want to. Yeah, they, you were eager to ask a question. Yeah, no, I wanted to bring you back to this question about the awareness. Yes, because I really uh, appreciate it and I think it deserves special attention. Why do I believe it deserves special, special attention? Because we often use words in terms that we forget that we need to define them from time to time, or at least try to define them at a very basic level. Because people might come inside the room and say, oh, these people are so aware about what they're doing, like, what's happening? Why, why am I not this way? So first, maybe you're right that there is a contradiction. I'm fine with contradictions, but I'll try to give you a possible way to resolve this contradiction. I'm not saying that, that this is what is relevant to your view. But this is my perception from outside. Uh, I think when he's talking about awareness, and he used a very interesting metaphor, to listen, to follow the sounds, and to install yourself into the situation. I think it's a wonderful way to put it. And I think it is a way to merge yourself, phenomenologically, into the situation. It's at a very perceptive level, which includes all your cognitive and emotional capacity. It's plural. Um, another thing is whether we are aware only, because at the moment we are aware about something, we are, we are also not aware about many other things that happen at the same time. So paying attention to the lack of awareness, I believe, is equally important. It's only fair to do so, because otherwise you know, someone might say, she's so bright, she's aware about whatever she's doing. This is not the case. <laughs> but most of the time, I find myself, especially after the fact that I'm totally unaware, mm -hmm. despite the fact that I have the sense that I'm really aware about my intentionality when I perform. So I follow, so my consciousness follows the subject, and I go through it, and I concentrate, and this is what I suspect Jürgen was talking about. Mm -hmm. 
to be aware at a very subjective level. And it, I, I wouldn't engage with validity claim because it's a very subjective, but there is such awareness. But at the same time, we're not aware about all these interpretive possibilities that our work brings to the audience. And this is the most wonderful part when people come and say, Helge told me that someone went to them and suggested a brilliant interpretation of whatever he did. And he said, it's remarkable because it, it opens all these other possibilities for, for reading my own work and suggests also lots of other possibilities for approaching your future, future process. So when I'm saying that maybe I'll try to resolve this contradiction, one is to be aware, you know, when you follow your intentionality at a subjective level, phenomenologically, as I said, and another is to be aware of all implications that every action does in the world, in everyone's mind when people are in the room. So I see basically no contradiction here. I mean, they happen together. But what I'm asking for is to be, uh, to be aware of, of this lack of awareness, because I, I find it very important. Because then we are open to all these possibilities that come from outside. People come and say, do you know that my reading was this and that? And go, oh, I wasn't aware of this. But that's why we meet, that's why we're together. So I don't know if it's wonderful. Sometimes it feels wonderful to me, sometimes it feels horrible to me. <laughs> but like, I, think, I think it's worth doing it. It's worth trying to meet each other, whatever it means. Thank you for your question. Uh, no, I mean, I don't have um, any conflict with what, in some respects, with what you're saying, or also with what you said as well, in terms of a concept of the, pres the presentation of the self as an individual in that moment, and how you construct that, how we construct ourselves in that moment, and that level of awareness, in a sense. And the beauty of the, rep the repeating of the action and the sound allows, in a sense, that to be revealed in the moment, or invoked, or called up, or arises, in a sense. And I think that that is what you were expressing to me when you said you were discussing that exploration of humanness in the moment. My question, though, to you was that in reducing your action to the simplicity of the bell going, you are working across then so many kind of layers of interpretation, which, you know, it's our responsibility, our perception in a sense. But one of them that you did hit upon last night was that question for, a, probably for many people, around colonialization or a dominant voice hammering consistently upon another and even then the existence or survival of another voice within that. Okay, now we're speaking on a human level. We are human. And even if we strip away our awareness to the, the most basic beats, in a sense, there is something that is still about communicating to, to another. And what, what, do we want, what do we want to say when we strip it down? That we're all writers, <laughs> you know? That we are all, you know, it's just about me, it's just about me, it's just about me, it's just about me. You know, this, this, is, this is my question. It's just like, what do we then say if we if we present ourselves on that on that level as a being, as as the way we exist? And uh, and if we want to speak about where colonialization, it's awareness that we want to evoke or call upon as being something that is uniquely human. My selfishness. <laughs> You know, now, now, now when we're taking it maybe away from exactly what you were intending with the performance, or not even intending, you know, just discovering. But uh, this, this is maybe where that question leads, you know? It's, it's interesting for me to hear your, your passionate response to, like, I'm, I'm really tr trying to find out what the, what the intended experience for you or or meaning might be but I but also in, in listening to you I'm, I'm hearing that you know that in in your process and approach it's very specific and simplistic and dedicated to 
to that, but being open to the understanding that it's going that there are are all those other layers that are going to be experienced. No, no, I'm responding to how he, he spoke about mm -hmm. his work, about mm -hmm. questions of awareness, of perception, of intersubjectivity, of subjectivity. Is this what you you yeah. responded to my question? Yeah. So if we're going to take the conversation to that level, then let's take it to that level and then what do we mean by those things? You know? What are we then yeah. saying if we're going to have a conversation? about these aspects of our humanity? Yeah, okay, I have <laughs> I, to say, sorry, with respect to this particular work, my personal experience, I'm not saying about interpretation, there is a remarkable amount of care in the way he took us inside the situation and then he took us out. It shows the connection to the other people. For me, it's revealing. So I didn't know anything about him as an artist. No, no, I mean, but, I, but the way yeah. he did it, yeah. with this very, very gently taking us inside. This is what is revealing with respect to, to the human quality of the artist, to me. Because it's not like I'm, I'm hammered with something that happens, exotic, and, and then I don't know how to go out because it's so powerful and I feel ghost and abandoned. Is this, okay, you know, it's, it's the way it's very, very carefully constructed. It's like he would say, no, it's not, it's so, like, and I'll agree, but I think, I'm, not, I'm sorry to, to defend, you know, in some stupid way, I'm sure people can do it for themselves, but my personal experience, I really felt welcomed into the peace, being there in a very powerful way, uh, with all my personal subjective interpretations that I don't need to share with anyone, and then, and then going out of it in a, in a very smooth and, and again sensitive way. So this is, this is the key, and this is the connection to the others for me. I don't know what you expect. Of course it's all about me, because I'm staying there, people are watching me. Like, but it's not only about me, it's about me being together with these people. Yeah, I want to give Jorgen an opportunity to respond, because there's been a lot of... I think I, I told you yeah. everything, you yeah. know, because I, I, I'm zero, really happy, uh, because in this moment I'm doing this performance. Everybody has the right to uh, to interpret it and take him in his own reality. I think we have uh, different realities. So she take it to her, and and you will take it to yours. I I can only tell what I was doing. So I was doing, and what I was uh, is just going uh, take it physically, going to my border of what I'm able to do with the bell and coming down. That's all. So if, uh, if, you, if you feel it, it's violent, it's true. For you it's violent and it's true. For me, for me it's just a simple physical thing coming from the silence, starting with hearing, going to the most possible I can physically do and going back, you know? So of course it's a possible interpretation to say it's hammering to the other, you know? But it was, of course, not my intention to hammer him. You know, it was just like I told you. I told everything. I told to Gabe, okay, I was very happy. He's a really good musician, you know. I told him what I was going to do, and I make the bell. And he was very happy with it because for him, ah, he, he found that he can uh, that he can do his stuff. I do mine, like I told this Paul. And then we will. It will create the situation. Maybe it's violent, it's true, but it's violent for me, it's okay, you know? Why not violent? Why, why not hammering? But I'm not expressing hammering or whatever, but it can happen that you have uh, this expression, yes. Uh, I want to raise a question about responsibility, because uh, you're talking, you know, I'm totally with you on all your sort of philosophical and sort of formal questions, right? You've got a very conscious relationship to, to yourself as a performer, what you're doing as a performance artist. Well, I find you kind of reluctant to take responsibility for the content of your work, right? Because, it, you know, we can use all these words of philosophizing or whatever, but actually this work is really strong in saying very specific things. And you cannot deny that. You cannot say this is just like a possibility of reading. It's saying something very specific, so it is. And I would like to see you take responsibility for what you are saying. 
You know what I mean? I think no. that's why you get too much discussion around right? your yeah. yeah. It's why you get to go. It's because we want you to take responsibility for what you threw into the world. And I've heard other artists and visual artists also say there's no moral, right? So I can say whatever I want. I can use prostitutes or children, prostitutes, whatever, in my work without taking moral responsibility for it. And, and, and it's provoking when you're saying so strong political things and denying responsibility for content and only talking for uh, If I could um, just... I think uh, it's interesting um, when we uh, we have the ex experiences like you know watching an interpreter um, and um, you know thinking about the sound um, you know and uh, the uh, difference experience I'm having entirely about looking at what sound might mean in a visual sense. I think um, you know it's a very sensory experience, but it's very interpreted and not, and then it's of course interpreted, right? So the power of a bell, I'm thinking, you know, so what, right? So what? Uh, now, uh, the power that comes from a powerful thing for me, but I think it's also back to collaboration, right? Sound, uh, visual sound for me. Um, it's a, it's a it, you know, we can say it's something is undeniable, except for the power that's there, the result of that, um, that might be uh, that there's a, um, something that people can understand clearly across the board, but I'm my sense then is coming from looking at uh, people's reaction to that, um, not having a sense of the bell. So it's a sort of a you know the sound based. Um, this it's a very different experience, a very different sensory experience. Uh, very much for me a visual one, not an auditory one. And so it's interesting to just be watching the strong responses to something that I had an entirely different experience of. you know, male European sort of dominance in, uh, of indigenous people here. So is, is, is I'm, I'm to come here to not have some sort of awareness at least of how profoundly this can be read visually. And I don't necessarily agree that it was, uh, I didn't read anything with Hammond. To be quite honest, there are times and moments, most of it I really, really thoroughly enjoyed. I thought the, the, the bell, the sounding of the bell, the drum, it was, it was absolutely a, a beautiful mix. Uh, the movement of your body, uh, ringing the bell, was beautiful. Those two things together, as yes, isolated uh, uh, the sounds together, uh, even just visually, the two of you, as separate beings, but then there's this, what was the in interaction though, visually, not just visually, even auditory, I can close at certain points, close my, eyes and listen and I hear Gabe's voice, I hear the tiredness. He's wondering when it will end. I don't know if you don't if you don't pick up on that, just as a musician. Just as a collaborative musician. Or maybe you don't know enough of the sound and the singing of, of indigenous music. As someone who does and sings it, I pick up on his tiredness. I pick up on his I'm holding this man up until he's done, his clothes die ringing of the bell, you know? And then how he has to go on. And I'm sure for him it was a beautiful experience as well. But you're also inviting someone in who's uh, not likely coming from a much more critically engaged sort of uh, practice to, uh, uh, um, although certainly in, in you know our own communities and you know Indigenous peoples, we've had these conversations a lot of times. There's a, a, a real awareness and a history of, of being very generous and we will give and we will continue you know, to, to indulge. I think I, I really I, I will I have to think a lot of what you have uh, told me today. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I look. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think. Aha. Uh -huh. I, I spoke with Gabe before. You know, I spoke with him. I think you can be very because he's doing the singing for hours. 
you know, he, he can go on with the singing, for, because normally the, he told me about his powwow, they go for hours, you know, with like, but, you know, but and for me it's very interesting. I have to think a lot of what, what, uh, what was going on today, you know, because this affects for me, and I'm not clear, but I, I have to think about, it affects the idea of person for me, because the, the uh, idea of person, of it, the, uh, one of the interesting thing in performance art, what means person? Because person is of course the body, but it's a socialized body. So when I come, of course I bring all my culture with me. That's in fact the, the thing and the theme of performance art is the person. And when, we, when I told, okay, uh, the, the thing, what is going on in performance art is to show the person, it's of course not the body, because all the person with all his cultural background, his possibilities, his wrong ways, his right ways, everything can be shown and be exp uh, appear, can appear in performance. This is, for me, what is, uh, what is performance art. And uh, so, what more? I think, now I have to think about it. What more can I do to come as this European person and tell to Gabe, okay, that, that's you, and maybe this violent person, that's, that's me. Maybe you're absolutely right. This, is, this culture is a violent one. I was not, you know, it's me with this bell. So, and what more can I do to tell, okay, let's share this space and time, you go your way, I go mine, and then we will see what is the possibility, you know, and even you tell, okay, it reminds, comes back to this shit things of domination and everything, maybe yes, maybe yes, maybe this is, uh, this is the, the image we created yesterday, maybe yes. And there's no problem with that. What, 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 what? There is no problem with creating that image, yeah. it's just about yeah. Consciousness yeah. of the creation. Yeah. Of that. Yeah. 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 I think I think that the the, the interpretation is a secondary thing, yeah. and uh, it's interesting that you say we're taking the responsibility because of course you are probably aware of at least a few interpretations that yeah. the general audience may have, but I think it's a secondary thing um, because what, what what I see and what I hear that is what it is. And if we have like a hundred people and they all see it uh, in a different way, that can be an enrichment, uh, but it can bring uh, <coughs> something that you see also a little bit further away from you. And once again, I think it's a secondary thing. And I don't, I don't think that at all times you can take responsibility for the interpretation of the third. But I think the question is about responsibility also is, is, is interesting too. And I, I would really yeah, come to Yeah. I just, I, I actually want, want to spend some time talking, talking with the other artists as well, and maybe even if they can, uh, they can speak to <laughs> responsibility uh, that that they they feel towards the, the audience as performers, but but also in in terms of, I, I mean, the the topic of awareness has has come up, um, and I I'm interested in. Um, and specifically when you're when you're moving to a community that um, that is foreign to you how you how you approach that or if there have been instances um, <laughs> where you've realized uh, you know just like this conver conversation um, has il has illuminated that that something that you that you planned was interpreted in a way that was surprising to you? Um, well, I just recently, uh, this conversation and the question related to research, you know, mm -hmm. I think being prepared, um, you know, and feeling like you've uh, gone ahead and you've sort of done something and you've done your piece and then later the interpretation um, you know, now as a part of history that you sort of hadn't anticipated. So it's almost like research in, in the post setting. You know, you, you reflect on the piece and consider outcomes, unexpected outcomes, as you consider that piece. You know, what are the cultural issues? What, you know, what, what were some of the, you know, that what presented itself perhaps that was unanticipated? So I think the research can be post-performance 
in, in the sense of you're still discovering it, you're still trying to understand it, and that might be a better mindset. I think as well, um, you know, not having expectations around what will happen, but you do have a, some anticipa uh, anticipation around um, maybe a, a reaction, not what the reaction will be, but you anticipate a reaction from the audience, and then you hope that the feedback loop, you know, you take that reaction and you move forward in the piece and what happens to it down the road. Was there a specific, have you had a specific experience where that was the case for you? Where, where there was a, a difference in, in, in what you were uh, potentially trying to convey, especially because I think, Yolanta, you're working with, lang with language, um, which is you know, just like image, very open to interpretation and, and misinterpretation. Um, I, because my uh, language is there, again, not the use of language, uh, mm -hmm. specifically like American Sign Language or English, it's more of a theme of language as the topic, not, again, language art. So I do use a dictionary in some of my uh, work, and I wrote, uh, rip pages out of it. I rip, uh, you know, do a fair, fair amount of da damage on that. I also use rope um, and, and tie it in certain knots around words and um, thoughts of language, um, you know. And so again, there's a plan. So I have the dictionary ripped up, and I have the rope la laid in a certain way. I have. Uh, the um, charred, uh, charcoal pieces that are burned of the book, you know, the, uh, so I have all these, then I've used the charcoal that the paper's burned to write and make words, so again, there's a, there's a plan to that, there's burnt books, uh, burnt words from a dictionary, the charcoal's writing, the, you know, so it, it's got a plan to it, and yet it's not to say I can plan what it's going to be, you know, at the same time. So, uh, so again, I think, you know, looking at a metaphor, looking at intended meaning, looking at unintended meaning, uh, certainly up to uh, the audience to participate in the art in whichever way they see fit, that is not a part of the plan. And, uh, can I, I want to ask the same of Kaori, and especially because um, there's a consideration of the political so much in her work. Um, how, it, if there's a specific example she can remember where um, there was a, a reaction that surprised her from the audience to the work, if it resonated in a certain way that she wasn't expecting. あの、私があの、なんていうかな。あの、女性であること、で、日本人であること、それからアジアの中の日本の女性であること。I am a woman. I'm Japanese. I am a Japanese woman in Asia. で、それでそういう自分が例えばあの so when I'm invited to uh, festivals, performance festivals in Asian countries where uh, Japanese army used to uh, invade in the past, I will uh, need to be very careful uh, what kind of performance and messages I will bring with my piece. Careful, careful. Oh, so it's not careful, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Must be careful, but the, the sensitive. The, I want to, uh, my uh, the mental situation really sensitive before going to there. The, so that, the kind of, um, to, I haven't been performing for uh, too long time. The first few years, I have only thought about those issues. Uh, as a Japanese uh, woman, as a woman, as a 
government of Japan uh, used to invade uh, Asian countries. Uh, when I uh, performing in Asian countries, uh, I thought of how the audience would uh, interpret uh, my pieces, and I thought about it uh, most of the time. でも、今、あの、違うんですよ。<笑> As I've experienced uh, more uh, opportunities performing, uh, uh, by being there myself, uh, communicating with local people and having dinner, uh, talking, uh, I uh, started realizing that I, don't, I didn't need to be that conscious about the uh, social... You have to be conscious about the... Uh, it's okay. The uh, more natural. Uh, I could be more natural. Mm. The, uh, no, 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 Step on my foot as well. だから、例えば戦争っていう一つの動かしがたい事実があったとして。Or is the distinct uh, uh, fact, the concrete reality? これは殺し合いをするわけですから、どちらが加害者か被害者か、結局勝った負けたっていうのはあるんだけど、どちらが加害者か被害者かっていうのは。in work, uh, people kill each other, so uh, one cannot define which side is aggressor or victim until uh, they have the uh, winning country or losing country. So there's a possibility of uh, being both. 例えば日本で言えば広島のことについて言うときっていうのは私たちはアタックされたされたされたってなるけれどもアジアの方ではどうだったのか例えばカンチャノブリーの方ではその例えば欧米の人たちに対あのソルジャーに対しても酷いことし
Well, uh, I was born in 1959, and my presence at wherever I perform, uh, all these uh, background contexts, it's already there. For me, where I put myself, yes, for reality putting me in the in the in the uh, performance was on the side of the eye. In the side of the? Uh, the uh, on the same. I mean, it's light put us in your performance. Yeah. And where I was sitting, it was a guy, fucking drunk. Gabriel. Gabriel. Okay, Gabriel. Gabriel. It was his fucking drum <laughs> that made me not hear the sound of that beautiful clock, you know. And it's also important where we put ourselves in this discussion. Where were you sitting? I saw Stain, for instance. He was on the other side. On the other side of you. Probably. I mean, it's also how we position ourselves in our mind and what position you want to have. I understand exactly what you're saying. It's, it's really interesting to listen to this. But for me, I was angry about the game because he was hammering so much that I didn't hear the, the subtitle sound from Jürgen's. Huh? Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it's important where reality puts you also. Tanya, Tanya, well, I like work that makes me be in that position. I, for me, the important thing is to be, I like the provocation. The important thing is not to be disrespectful. So I think that it's important for us to keep questioning the sins of our fathers, the sins of our mothers, our sins, you know, like sins. Uh, so so I, for me, I love art that makes me question. Whatever question, just question. I like I like the questions. I don't think anybody was posing answers. No, no one is saying it's not dogma, it's not propaganda. It's just making questions. I think that's what it is. I just I, there's something to be said that I connects both what the panel are saying as a whole, and I think the comments from here. But the, this question of responsibility, I think that maybe the friction in the middle here has to do with how, how an artist can adopt responsibility but not guilt for interpretation. Because I think responsibility is important, but it's difficult where the line is. It's difficult, you know, if my interpretation of this performance is like this personal, something from my childhood that is completely unique, how can he be guilty for that, for invoking that in me? But he also feels to be responsible as an artist for invoking theory. And I don't know where that line is, but I just I feel that that needs to be said and that I think I think maybe we're all there. Maybe not. Well, I don't know. I don't really understand what you mean. I mean, so I agree with you that in, to some extent that the interpretation is secondary because because every single person's interpretation is so uniquely of them mm -hmm. that I don't feel, I would never assume to possibly know what I would bring forth in view through my actions. Mm -hmm. But I also feel the need to take responsibility for my actions, but not a guilt for what I bring. You know? And yeah, I, I'm not I sure what that line is. Yeah, I think you're right. So I, I think that it's true of both, not that you guys are saying opposite things, I think they're both true, but but maybe the question is where that line is and how that's even possible to grasp that. <coughs> and even though I think interpretation is, uh, I think, a secondary thing, it is very, I don't say it's not important, because it's very, very, it can yeah. make or break. But, uh, well, maybe it is, but it's But what you see what is, is the most important. And in the case of, of, of Jürgen's work, I think, for, um, yeah, how to say, you know, visually for me it was not it was not interesting enough. I see also this uh, it's very self centered what yeah. he did. I think that that's what we kind of came to the to the thing and and maybe that's not good or that's that's not bad, but it has to do with timing maybe and maybe how he would uh, how how he reads the environment with the performance. Many people say he closed his eyes, but I did see that from time to time he is like 
by peeking through. <laughs> well, I think that uh, Gabriel was, was in, in my uh, opinion, yeah, so that just doesn't mean anything, but was much uh, better reading the situation, you know, and uh, I don't know who said what was like trying to keep uh, Jürgen up, yeah. and, and that is maybe again an interpretation, you know, that it's a secondary thing. Yeah, but the other thing, and I agree with you, but I also don't expect, I don't feel, well, you know, that it's not a finger pointing. No, no, it's not. No, 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 I don't sense it anyway, it's no, a finger pointing. No, 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 but, but that's, that is the question of how to, how to take adopt the responsibility. I don't know. Have we time to go back to the question of responsibility? Or we have 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes. <laughs> is that the pressing question uh, we can talk about responsibility I, I also was interested in, in y you mentioning that uh, it's, a, it's about it's all about what we see because there are also elements in all of their work that isn't necessarily about what's being seen but what's being physically experienced and what's being heard and that's a whole other question too but I'm, ha I'm happy to did you have have something specific you wanted to ask about and you have a question too um, or a comment at least or a comment okay so responsibility well, and then well let me if I just wanted when you were talking about responsibility I guess my sense is when we look at the artist um, and uh, wanting to perhaps um, send a message but it's uh, indirect in the sense that the audience is gathering gleaning from that message so our responsibility perhaps is to send the message send a message um, on my values my culture my information is in the message as it's sent but it is not a part of how the message is received so my, my I'm not responsible for the receiving of the message I'm not responsible for um, what comes when you get it. I am just responsible for its intention upon being sent. That's what I would say. I feel that after Robin spoke that yeah. there, there was something that was addressed that, so all that, I mean, I feel like that we made, we made some progress in the, in the, in the discussion and, and what the point was that was being made, so. You didn't get this. No. What, what I was saying is that um, the question of responsibility is, is different in terms of like uh, the work itself, right? And the considerations yes. that you make when you make the work. And then how, because now we're in a situation where you're talking yes. about the work, right? In the panel. Yes. So, uh, and that's a different scenario. Yes. You know, so how, uh, how are you presenting it to us uh, in terms of, of process and thinking and consideration? No, you don't need to say it. Uh, okay. <laughs> she was clarifying what she was saying. She was clarifying what she was saying. Yeah, yeah. what the, what Tonya is saying. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. quite important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. it's evoking things, and that's yeah. really the interesting, right? Yeah. But then, how do you relate to that when you have a conversation? And you I know, for, yeah. for, for, so, you know, for me, it's really it's very interesting. I have to think about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I told you, right? It's a question for me of the person. So. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and the other thing, so I don't want to be disrespectful. It's really, for me, a one interesting point. In, a, in a, I see performance, and I'm doing performance. For me, really, it's the same thing. When I'm looking to performance, I learn, I'm doing, I'm exchanging nearly the same way I'm doing. And what I'm doing is, how always when I'm sitting there, I, I'm very careful how this performance comes to me because it will tell me such a lot about myself. So if I'm listening to you, and for me it's so interesting because you are speaking about yourself, not so much about the performance. And, and so for me it's really interesting that point of I'm happy, of course, that this performance evolved so much whatever is going on. Because, so I understand that a lot of the situation through your, what, what, how it comes to you, how it affects you or not. You know. 
this is what I learned. People speaking about performance mostly speak about themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a very good thing, you know. Why I bring it back to responsibility and what Agnes was saying and also what Tanya is, but if we are going to say, if we are going to create work that is about speaking about what it means to be an individual, then we have a responsibility within our discussion about our processes to be try to be as conscious about the layers that it involves. But it's so, because it's so culturally related that we cannot no, no, no. be prepared for this. No, yes, responsibility just sounds way too judgmental. Mm -hmm. Responsibility is more like, well, I mean, it's like responsibility. No, 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 when people are trying to be provocative in, a, in, 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 a, you know, in an in, in engaging way, then you know, they need to take responsibility. But how about are you finding another word such as? No, hold on. I think wait, wait till I finish. And and we do we we do need to <laughs> we do need to wrap up. So I don't. Could opportunity be a word rather than the responsibility to it? You have the opportunity to? No, Paul's saying not at all. <laughs> I'm trying to be a little more po <laughs> less confrontational. Consider it. I I'm wondering if if anyone else in the group has any last remarks based on. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, only one, one thing, I, I really, of course, I, I, I really like this discussion because now it, it directly gives us a platform for the next question. What is the next 10 hours is about quality of performance art. We always avoid, avoid this question, but I'm really interested because there is no answer, you know? But exactly this question of responsibility, of different approaches, of everything could, and so I'm very happy, I have a lot of things about, could uh, lead us directly there. You know what I mean? What is, why, what, why, what is, what is, a, what is a potential of this art form? I think we, we just reached there to go, go further in this uh, question. Thank you. There's another performance art daily tomorrow. So hopefully everyone will come back. Hosted by Tanya. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It's going to be way more lame than this. Way more laid back. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, th thank you to the artists and. And everyone, everyone in the room for being so open with the dialogue. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And I just also wanted to acknowledge the Gendai Foundation for providing uh, interpretation for uh, Gendai, G-E-N-D-A-I Foundation for providing interpretation from Japanese, and of course, a special thanks to our interpreters today. <laughs> <laughs>